Tired of wasting your sports card budget by making impulsive, FOMO-driven purchases? I just created The Cure, and I'm sharing it with you for free. Let's data dive. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercod, better known as Teapot, and this week, I'm doing something off the beaten path. I'm going to share a secret formula with you to help you stop buying the wrong sports cards. Because admit it, it gets you. It's 1.22 a.m., you're laying in your bed, your face illuminated by the glow of the eBay app, compulsively checking all your safe searches. The next thing you know, you're checking a seller's other items to see if you can take advantage of combined shipping. And soon thereafter, you spent $50 on cards you didn't really want, just to convince yourself it made the $5 shipping on a $5 card worth it. It gets all of us. FOMO gets all of us. The lack of focus gets all of us. Impulsiveness gets all of us. And I went and got geeky this week in my spare time, and I came up with a scoring system to quantify and rank cards on your consideration list. So that's what we're gonna walk through today. And since the last winner never claimed his prize, this beautiful box of Bowman's Best to You football is back on the menu. So I want you to leave a comment down below just giving me your honest thoughts on my scoring system, whether you think it's overkill, do you think it's cool, or how you think it could be improved. Let me know your thoughts on this. And as always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE for your first seven days free, and then you'll get 20% off of your first payment as well. Now let's get into the data. All right, so one of my favorite things to do is just to rank things. I used to be a big movie guy, watched a lot of movies, and I had my own little proprietary scoring system for movies, all the different facets and attributes of movies and what I liked about them. And that kind of inspired me to do the same thing with cards. I've actually been meaning to do this for, uh, for a while. I finally got in here and I'm just gonna walk you through this. So left-hand side here with the blue headers, not overly complicated. This is just the, you know, the player, essentially all the card details. And you could put anything in here. One thing I can't stress enough, this is not meant to be prescriptive that everybody should follow this scoring system. It's more to be inspiration to help you do this if you wanted to. And if you want a copy of this, like a white labeled version of this, I will be happy to email you a copy that you could then copy in Google or whatever. Just email us at help at sportscardinvestor.com if you like this, and I'll be happy to send you a copy. So the card details here, status, this could be anything. You know, you could be watching, you could put whatever you want. You know, these are the cards like, okay, so I own these just so that I have them as a frame of reference. And you're building a list over time of cards compared to one another to help you decide, is this the one that I wanna spend my hard earned money going after? You know, you're sweating week to week, trying to get people to sign up for market movers so you can keep your job, and then you wanna spend your money on the right card. So, players here. I put a little formula in place, uh, you know, kind of referencing these players over here. Every time I add a new unique player, then I get a little pop up here. So for example, if I were to do, uh, let's say uh, for some reason, Cam Thomas, I see the little red, I would come over here, I would put in Cam Thomas, and then I'm gonna put in my ranking from zero to 100, how much that player means to me. So completely subjective, again, it's your own scoring system, but that way you stay consistent every time you use that player following that, that formula is tied to a VLOOKUP over to that tab so that you're never accidentally ranking a player inconsistently. All the card details here, you can link out to things. For example, on this card, I linked this card out to Market Movers. So it's gonna pop open, and take me to this if I wanna check the price or anything. Obviously, I have this in my collection in Market Movers, but sometimes you wanna link it that way as well. And then this is where the rubber meets the road. You could have whatever categories you want here. What I did was I took the things that I think are most important to me with some flexibility, starting with, with aesthetics. You could call it design, you could call it eye appeal, you could break those things up if you really wanted to, but to me, aesthetics was the most you know, comprehensive and the easiest to do, and I gave that 25% weighting of the total score of the card. It's very important. The next one was rarity. Rarity is a little less important to me. I know people who rarity is like maybe the most important thing to them. Low pop cards, low serial numbered cards. <clears throat> I appreciate a really rare card that you can't find all, all the time for sure, but it's definitely not the most important attribute for me. Speaking of which, importance. That sounds kind of general, but that could just mean it's very iconic, it's important to the hobby, it's their key rookie card, something along those lines. And in that sense, again, it's, it is a you know, relevant 
attribute, but for me, when I stack up all these things, it's kind of like 5%, so that's my weighting. That's you see in the top uh, part here. Player, 35%. Now, I like a lot of players. I like a lot of different players, all eras, all different things, but this is where that scoring system for the value for a specific player comes into play with the score. And then finally, just miscellaneous. This gives you the flexibility as the person ranking your own cards to just kind of give a little bit of a bump to a card for that little bit of je ne sais quoi when there's nothing else fitting into these other four categories. And I weighted that at 25%. And on some cards, I might just say for miscellaneous, yeah, it's, it's really not that high. I'm gonna put it at 10, it doesn't matter to me. There's not like an extra bump for anything. So it's sort of like a little bonus multiplier on it. And then at the end, you get your score. So all I'm doing is I'm multiplying these scores by the weighting consistently, and then that allows you to start ranking these cards. So I put some of these in here. Those of you who know, I'm a big Andre Drummond fan. I have a big Andre Drummond PC, so he's gonna be player score 100. He's at, in my top list. Uh, Andre Drummond, Albert Pujols, Barry Sanders, Giannis, John Stockton. There's a handful of guys who are gonna fit into that 100. They're gonna get the full points for player importance for me, so they'll always get 35 points when it's one of their cards. And I just went through these, and this card is obviously one of my most prized possessions. It's a 2012 Prism Gold uh, Prism for Andre Drummond, it's his rookie card. So aesthetics, really hard to beat a 2012 Prism Gold, those early years, 2012 and 2013 in particular, really beautiful cards. So I gave it a 95 for aesthetics. Rarity, 95, it's numbered to 10, and my copy actually happens to be a BGS 10. Now, initially I had grade on here. I decided to take it out. <clears throat> Why did I decide to take it out? Because honestly, grade isn't that important to me. You could have that as a category, condition. I was messing around with that for a little bit, condition or grade or whatever you wanna call it. I thought it better to put it into the combination, I guess, of rarity, importance, and miscellaneous when I'm you know, thinking about that because sometimes, obviously, the grade does matter on the card and the price point's obviously gonna be reflected in that as well. Importance of this set, it doesn't get more important, really, in Panini era cards than 2012 Prism. Player 100 and miscellaneous, I also gave a 100. This was my ultimate chase card for a long time for my drum and PC. I bought one last year on PWCC. So this one comes out at the top with a score of 98.25. So you can keep going down the list. Here's another one, this 2011 Topps Finest. I showed you that beautiful card, the red refractor to 25. I'm a big Pujols fan. I got into baseball a little bit later in my life, like in the 2000s when I was in college. And after, I was not as a big uh, baseball fan when I was growing up, mostly football and basketball. And Pujols was the guy, the most feared hitter, obviously an absolute machine, uh, you know, no pun intended. And so I went through this, 95 aesthetics, absolutely beautiful card, almost like that PMG saturated red look. Rarity, not quite the same as the gold. However, the copy that I bought, uh, the PSA 9 of this card, very low population, pop one, pop two, something along those lines. Importance, 2011 Finest is kind of a sought after set. I gave it a little bit of a boost. Obviously, um, there's Mike Trout. That's a, you know the big chase in that product, and it is kind of just a fan favorite. So I boosted it a little bit over that 50, 50 point halfway point. Player 100, and then miscellaneous. This is, again, there's no science to this. You're sort of like toying and playing with your own scores. So you get to the end score, and then you can see, and I think where the real value is, okay, where did this fall in my list of other cards? Does this feel like the, the type of card that is higher than the next one down, which is this Barry Sanders, Tiffany, so on and so forth. So that's kind of the whole shtick here. I obviously didn't fill this out in great depth. I started working with it, and this is something that could completely evolve over time. Again, I think there's really no right or wrong answers here. You could tailor this to your own needs. The process in and of itself is what I think is really exciting to me. It's kind of like this self-discovery. And I could see this for me being a way that if I'm at a card show, for example, I'm not gonna get out my computer and pull out a spreadsheet. I'm not gonna try to do a Google Sheet on my phone. But as you build this up over time, for those of you who have maybe seen like Dave Portnoy's pizza reviews, it, this is what comes to mind. He goes out, he steps out on the sidewalk, he takes a bite, he has a process, almost like going through the different aspects, the undercarriage and the cheese and all of the things, right? And he gets to the end and he just goes, yeah, okay, it's a good, it's a good pie, it's a good pizza, 7.2. And then there's no real more science to that. Some people could say, well, that's completely unscientific. It doesn't matter. He's ranking it on his own scale. That's what I could see happening. I walked up last year. There was a really cool Ichiro card at a card show, and I hemmed and hawed. 
I didn't have a process to kind of go in my head, wait, where would this card really fall? Is this gonna be a 71? Is this a 63? Is it a 92? To say, yes, actually, I wanna prioritize this. Even though I didn't come to the show looking for this card, I gotta have it now. Or, nope, it's really cool, but I only have so much money, so I don't wanna spend it on this card. And I think that's what's really exciting. So let me jump down to like this card. This is Patrick Mahomes' Optic Hollow rookie card, right? and just walk you through the process. And I would say aesthetics, I really actually like that 2017 optic football design, the hollows, I think it's a really nice looking set. I'm gonna give this one an 80 for aesthetics. And you could get as granular as you want. You see I did some 81s and you know, whatever. Rarity, uh, it's not a super rare card. Um, it's, you know, it's decently rare because it's from 2017, but not a super rare card. I'm gonna do 40 for the rarity. Importance. Optic Hollow rated rookie for Patrick Mahomes. Yes, it's a fairly important card. Um, I'm gonna say 80 on that card. The player you see is already filled in. Again, why? Because I went over here and I put in Patrick Mahomes and I did uh, his score over here as 95. Big Patrick Mahomes fan, I could definitely see that score over time going up to 100. He's just not quite at the level of some of these other guys for me yet, but I really obviously like him. And then miscellaneous at the end, I'm gonna say that the miscellaneous for me, because I really like this as an iconic Mahomes card, is 70. So that gets me to a 78.75. I'm gonna sort this up, and now I get that, and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, that moved pretty close to the top of my list. So 78.75, you're gonna keep filling this out. The one thing that's not in here, and I, I would actually welcome feedback on this, is how does it make sense to then incorporate this scoring system, which is just more about your desirability of the card, with the price, right? Because I could have a card on here that costs $30,000, and I could have a card that costs $30 on the same sheet, and the scores aren't factoring into it the price at all. So there's obviously that opportunity cost component. So if you have a creative way or a meaningful way, to sort of quantitatively factor price into this, let me know down in the comments, and I'd love to see that. Let's jump over and say, I was just in Market Movers and I wanna buy, you know, I think I wanna buy a J-Rod card, right? So you're back in price movements, you're looking at the gallery view, <clears throat> you put in J-Rod, PSA 9, just to get a look and an aesthetics and you're kinda of coming down and you're like, wow, okay, yep, okay, there's the black, tops black update. You got the logo fractor. You could pick one of these cards, come over here, put in Julio Rodriguez, right? So I'm gonna do Julio Rodriguez. Now I get the little red thing that says invalid, why? Because he's not part of my list yet. I come over here, J-Rod. How important is J-Rod to me right now? Honestly, not that important. I would like to have a nice J-Rod card because I think he's an up and comer. I'm just gonna put him smack dab in the middle at 50, just like I did. And maybe when I see that I go, yeah, okay, how does J-Rod compare to Randy or Rosarena? Let's bump him down to 40. There's no penalty for adjusting your own list or making edits like that. Nobody else is using this. It's all about your own preferences. So then you could fill out the details here. I'll spare you that point and you don't even have to do that. You know, you don't have to fill all this out every time. I'm going to come over here and go, okay, ooh, let's see. I like the look of the Logo Fractor. So that's the PSA 9 Logo Fractor. It's a cool card. It's the SP variation. Pretty rare. So aesthetics. Logo Fractors to me, very, very beautiful cards. I'm gonna give that a 90. Rarity is pretty good uh, on those. I'm gonna give it a 75. Importance, that's kind of a tough one because the Logo Fractor set is a new set, but it is highly sought after by a lot of collectors already. So I'm gonna give it a 65. And then the final score, the miscellaneous. Oh, let's say because I really you know, think it has some je ne sais quoi to it, I'm gonna give it a 60 on miscellaneous. And then you can sort your list again, right? Z to A, I'm gonna find that, okay, here's the J-Rod. It has kind of moved to the top of my list. And if I look at these and said, which one of those cards would I rather have in a vacuum, putting the money aside, I would probably rather have the J-Rod over the Cinque Pubelle uh, Steph Curry card that kind of comes up next on the list. So that's the process. You could do the same thing if you're over on eBay. I just put in gold refractor scrolling down. And this is a perfect example for me. These are the next two cards ending on auction. You've got two different cards, the Finest Moments Gold from 2007 and the 2003 Finest Peyton Manning. And if I look at these two cards and I were to run those through that formula, I can tell you right now, this, this one's gonna come out ahead because of that aesthetics factor. I like the 2003, 
better than the 2007. And when you're shopping for cards and you're saying, hey, maybe I wanna go after some gold refractors of Peyton Manning and you scroll down, there are a ton to choose from. Maybe you'd rather have Manning in the Colts jersey than the Broncos or vice versa. So this is gonna help you sort through that process and not get stuck putting in a bid on a card and then going, oh, why did I do that? Because there's a cooler one coming up or I didn't realize this one existed, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna help you control it. And maybe you get to the point where you go, I never put a bid in or make an offer on a card that comes in below a 60 or a 70 on my scoring system because I know there's always gonna be cards that I'd rather have more than that. That's it, that's the process. I kind of geeked out on this and frankly, I really wanna know what you think. Is this too dorky? Can you relate to this? Do you get down with the spreadsheet game? Let me know down in the comments. And like I said, I'll randomize the comments before next week's video and we'll try giving this away again. This is something that for me, I think I'd really like to see us kind of get into market movers at some point in the future to help people share their own lists too, share their scoring systems, maybe publish bounties, do some things like that. I think it could be really cool. That's why I wanna hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting, and make sure to have fun.